It is December 25th, 1991, a time when the entire Western world is celebrating Christmas, yet on the other side of the world, the side that I live on in the country of Georgia, we are in the middle of the Civil War and the fall of the Soviet Union. That Christmas day would be the last day that the Soviet flag would fly over the Kremlin in Moscow. So representatives from the Soviet republics had already announced that they would no longer be a part of the Soviet Union. I will never forget that day. I am in the kitchen with my mother. She is making dinner. The aroma of her cooking tempting me to remain in the kitchen until the dinner got done. I stared at her with adoration and observed her serene demeanor as she smiled at me in between chopping her salad. All of the sudden, I can hear the bombs going off outside as they were right over our roof. I am shaking, and at only 11 years old, I am utterly and completely scared. When the electricity clicks off and everything goes dark, I start to cry. I immediately jump from where I am sitting into my mother's arms. I wanted her to protect me. So how would you feel in this situation? Where would you hide? I refuse to die. I have so many dreams yet to accomplish. Finish school, get married, have children. But at that time, I believed that the end of the world had come and we were going to die. Even though my eyes were open, I couldn't see anything. All around me was complete darkness. After that, the life felt dark too. With no more access to the propane gas, we didn't have a heat. Our water got turned off and we couldn't find a clean water to drink anywhere. My dad had a very high paid prestigious job and before the war, we'd lived a very good life. Now, I'd gone from eating the caver to moldy bread and that if we could find food. So every other day we would wake up at 2 a.m. to get in line for bread. Some days we would stay in the bread line for four to five hours. And every other day we would receive only one small quarter of bread for four of us. If they ran out of the bread before we got into the front of the line, we were out of luck. So I felt despair and so did everybody else around us as people said goodbye to each other leaving home as if they were never coming back. War had brought despair, tragedy, and devastation. I thought back only a year before when my friends and I would play the war games, digging the shackles and choosing to fight for the good commander. Now here we were, facing the actual war. It was nothing like our games, because in this war, people died for real. And no matter how hard my little girl's brain and heart wanted things to be different, nothing, nothing could bring these people back to life. And when I realized my powerlessness, my helplessness, that I could not prevent the pain, I could not stop the suffering, I could not save a single soul, that's when the life stopped existing for me. And as the war continued, anyone who was not born in Georgia was forced to leave and go back to where they've been born. So my family faced this fear because my mom, who was born in Ukraine, was given the choice to either leave the country with my sister, with me, or leave without any kids at all. I could not imagine any worse nightmare for my mom to face this tragic choice and for me to be forcibly separated from my own mother. I could live without bread. I could survive without food. I could grow without education. But I could not imagine saying goodbye to my mom. What would our last hug and kiss feel like? What would I say? So instead of making this choice, my mom dyed her hair dark to resemble the other local citizens, and our family went into the hiding. 
when the war began to normalize, one of the last clear memories that I have is going back to school and sitting in a cold classroom with no heat, electricity, doors or windows. I could hear my stomach grinding. I was starving, yet I knew something was keeping my little girl's spirit alive. But what? It's been 29 years since I was a little girl, growing up in the middle of the war in the Soviet Union. Now I am an adult, and being an adult comes with a new pressure and responsibilities. Many of us dream to make a difference in the world or to create something of value, something real, something significant and necessary. Everyone has a right to dream and idealize these dreams. But how do we achieve such greatness when oftentimes our dreams aren't even clear to ourselves? Do we just sit there and hope that the dreams will fall into our laps? I believe in dreaming and in searching for the big, grand goals, but it's necessary to make an effort, have a strong desire, and take actions to bring our dreams into reality. Because for me, allowing myself to dream gave me the hope that I could feel joy again, joy that would not depend on any external circumstances. When I was 11 years old, and the entire external world collapsed around me, there was only one thing that saved me from my pain, my suffering, my fear, and made me victorious in times of total devastation and loss. And that was my joy. What I discovered is a joy is a gift we need to protect. When we find a strength to overcome insurmountable obstacles, and do more than just survive during these dark times in our lives, when we push through, no matter how hard it may be, we crack something open inside of ourselves where joy can come in. It is a feeling that we produce because we work so hard for it, and that's why it is a gift. It is a gift that we give to ourselves. When our lives are going well, it's easy to become lazy and not to dream and have goals and seek joy through material things. When we do, we get disappointed and dissatisfied, which can lead to us becoming unkind, unproductive, wasting our time, money, and talents. And this collapses joy. So how do we connect to joy so we can feel it in our own lives? Number one. True joy is formed in the midst of our toughest challenges. The minute that life feels tough, that's when we begin our journey to rekindle a spark that has always been there. Growing up in the midst of the war was the hardest time of my life. Yet, it was exactly those hardships when I had no food, stability, knowledge, if I even live that led me to discover the importance of joy. But actually, even before the war, I've been given the gift of dreaming and hope by my great-grandfather, who survived the massacre during the Armenian genocide of Ottoman Empire in World War I. He did not allow the pain, suffering, and guilt that he had experienced to be part of his generation as he grew up. So because of this, when the war began, I had the tools to hold on into my great-grandfather's life's message. Number two, joy begins with the hope. During those hard times in the war, I felt devastated and I wanted to crumble. But by allowing myself to dream of the brighter and different future, the future that did not include the war, famine, or death, suddenly hope appeared. So be flexible and open to how joy comes in. You may be surprised. And finally, number three, perseverance. It was only my decision and perseverance during hard times that propelled myself toward. Because too often we give up 
before joy has a chance to come in. I remember one day sitting in my classroom. I was tired and so hungry. I couldn't concentrate and I felt like I was going to pass out. But I told myself, just make it through the next hour, Ilona. And I did. If we take that one more step or action beyond what we believe we are capable of, then strength appears and suddenly we are propelled toward again. Because joy is not an idea. It's not a persuasion or decision. Then what is it? To understand what protecting our joy looks like, we also need to understand what not protecting joy looks like. One, we start seeking our answers in material things that disappoint and dissatisfy us. Two, we neglect and miss out into possibility to experience the exuberant details in this world. Three, we deny our identity and conform to the standards of this world. We become rude, unkind, unproductive, and become a poor steward of our time, money, and talents. So again, what does protecting our joy look like? Protecting our joy is like protecting our freedom because joy is a conscious decision that we make to nurture it and embrace it. Protecting inner joy begins at the moment that you choose not to let another person or circumstances or events to control you anymore. So what I found out through my experience is that often that we search for our identity, our spark, and our flame in the things that the world has to offer to us, things that are easy to break, lose, damage, or steal, because our joy comes from within. It is an internal process. So what does real joy look like? Joy is in our lives. We do not experience it. We have a power to rise up and defend it. Joy is not based on circumstances, such as a high-paid job, nice car, title, and a position in society, because joy is the oxygen that we need to strive and carry on with our lives. Because protecting our joy means not to let another opinion create your identity. I have fought survived, and conquered many battles in my life because I use the joy as my guiding source and to meditate my relationships. My dad didn't want me when he found out that his firstborn was a girl. I was rejected by my grandparents because I didn't look like them. I got called ugly by my relatives. I was turned out from the Georgian universities because of my Russian last name. I got denied a scholarship, even though I passed all the exams to qualify for it. I became an outcast due to the political discrepancy between Georgia and Russia at that moment. I was another reject, but by using the joy as the tool to move through these hurdles, I shifted my relationships my dad and I have a loving, close relationship, and he sees my values. My grandparents accepted me and loved me. I entered the beauty pageant and won the People's Winner's title. And I became the only one from my country to study abroad with a full scholarship. So where I am today is because the, I learned how to protect and cultivate my joy. That is the only reason I made it through. Because to me, the true joy definition is that joy is the presence of the divine assurance and the extraordinary strength that we always have inside of us. Joy is something that I have centered my entire life around. Because I say to myself, the power of who I am. We do have something greater that this world has to offer to us. It's something accessible and we all have it.
We just have to reach inside of ourselves and grab it. 